You know guys, I'm the one and only person that reads and responds to all the comments on this channel. And every time I put an Ember video out, I hear the same thing. When, it would be better if they made it a little bit bigger. Give me a bed I can walk around. When are they going to make tandem axle quad wheel versions? Well, seems I'm not the only one who was watching those comments. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Vicious RV, but here at Ember uh, today in their production facility, I was invited down for a special first look access at their uh, initial prototypes for their expanded, um, a lot of people want to say tandem axle, but in truth, it's a four wheel independent suspension, like off-road luxury glamper, <laughs> effectively. And what they did here, these might look a little bit familiar. They basically took two of their more popular floor plans, their 191 bunkhouse and their 171 couples camper with the slide, and they just extended them a little bit to have a front north-south walk around bed and a four wheel independent suspension system and some extra space inside that is going to do wonders toward doing things like um, overcoming the short uh, falls that the smaller floor plans had in terms of things like uh, limited storage space. The extra space gives you, uh, them more room for cabinetry. We have a walk around true queen bed up front here and they've maintained all the same features and construction that you've already come to know and love from Ember uh, just packed into a little bit larger package. Admittedly, you'll need a little bit bigger tow vehicle and certainly they're going to run a little bit more money once they're out. Keep in mind, this video, this is a sneak peek prototype video of two different campers, one of which is still very much in the in-process phase. But I, I wanted to get out here and give you the first look at this, start to get your feedback. And that's part of the reason the factory invited me down. Your input on these videos on our channel right here helped shape this exact floor plan. The things that you said you wanted, they put in here. So before they actually crank it into final production, they wanted one more chance to get some insights from you folks to make sure if there wasn't a couple other little tweaks and, and doodads that they needed to do on this. So as I always ask, your feedback is so, so important here. Let us know what you think, what you like, and if there's something you'd like to see change, if it's possible, if it makes sense before they put it into production, they just might do it because again, your input is the whole reason we're here today. All right, now we're going to be looking at two prototypes today in one video. Uh, so, you know, keep in mind, uh, this is early access footage. Some things might change uh, by the time these go into production, and they might change based on your feedback. So definitely be willing to share some insights there. Uh, they are basically going to be the bigger extended versions of the 171 FB, which is the little brother with the east-west bed version of this floor plan, and then the 191 MDB bunkhouse uh, prototype that we're going to see uh, in a few minutes here. This is called the 201 FBQ. Now, sometimes people want to go, what do, what are the, what's that alphabet suit mean? 201 means roughly 20-foot box, one slide, and front bed that's a true queen. Now, they specifically put the Q on there because they might be considering something like a king bed option or variant and or twin beds. So that's the kind of feedback they wanted to know. Would you like to see a uh, queen or a, uh, a king bed version of a floor plane like this? Now, when I say queen, I don't mean the camp variety. That is not a shorty queen where your feet are going to hang off the end so Ted the Bed Goblin can take a bite of your toenails, which is why I never have to trim mine because I'm tall and I like my feet to hang off the end of the bed. I don't mind a short bed, but I know that is not the preference of a lot of people. But additionally, they still maintain that Stargazer skylight system. So, um, you know, you, you always have that extra light, that visibility. And these uh, Euro style windows, if you're not familiar with these, people go, where's the bug screen? Well, oh, they did. Oh, look what they did. They did this based on your feedback. It used to be the blackout shade, the sun blocking shade was at the top. Now you can lift the blackout shade and maintain privacy while still being able to peek outside. And that is either going to be like a light sun blocker or a light uh, privacy screen. Or if you tilt the window open, that's your bug screen effectively. And these are dual pane Euro style windows that are insanely sound dampening. Um, like, I'm gonna shut up for a minute. You might hear a little bit of clunking and thunking outside. You're probably not hearing a lot. Remember, we are in an active live production facility today. This is carpetless, this is ventless. 
Um, it is all composite flooring. It actually has a combination furnace and water heater hidden away over here, but they put it like under the bed in a way that makes it so you can still pretty much kind of walk around it. And basically that's occupying the space under the foot of the bed. Now there's still an easy lift little storage trunk right there. And I love how nicely fit, like, you know, so you're not looking at just like raw exposed OSB chipboard or something. Um, it makes for the perfect storage place for things like that optional removable telescoping ladder right there that we're looking at. But because they had a full walk around bed, they had room to get around it. They now finally had room to really bulk up on the storage of this one. The walk around queen bed and the enhanced storage are truly the two biggest benefits that I see on this uh, extended uh, concept here. Not to mention the enhanced towability that you're going to be getting from a four wheel variety versus a two. And this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about right here. They didn't just take the floor plan that they already made and put a walk around front bed on it. They made sure any little space was touched, was dressed and pressed, and they 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 just utilized it so well. And a lot of what they've done here was heavily based on your feedback, which you're going to see in those two big tall doors. They just opened it up. They said, okay, you don't want a camp kitchen? Some people don't want that? Fine. We're just going to open it right up and make it wide open storage. But you might notice there's still a set of household outlets out there. So that if you do get the uh, optional little camp kitchen option, you can run the refrigerator off that or you can use it to power some stuff outside. Now, speaking of outlets, every single outlet that you see in this RV is wired from the factory with at least a 1000 watt inverter. It jumps up to a 3000 watt uh, if you get the uh, max solar package. The TV has its own storage space behind and this is a Clantry Tainment Center. It is an entertainment center. It is a pantry. And it is a closet because up top there is a hanging rod. And that's what's called a Mervin shelf. It's just a little magnet holdback shelf. But I love the attention to detail they had because it could be hard to reach up there and grab it unless you got long arms like mine. Go, go, gadget arms. Well, uh, now that is not an issue whatsoever. They're going to, you're going to see a little bit more of that cool action in just a minute here. First, walking you around the rest of the hidden hinge cabinetry with this being a little bit longer. One of the problems that the 171 had is it had, I feel, an extremely restrictive uh, kitchen. You don't have that problem here. It feels like there's so much more storage space going on. Um, again, though, I try to be fair in my videos. I'm trying to show you what this one does really well. Something it doesn't do well, or rather it doesn't do at all, is an oven. Because they standardized the two burner stovetop, that means there's not room below it for an oven to fit. They went with max storage and they figure you're gonna do a, a chunk of, <gasps> be still my heart. They listened. This power outlet used to be all the way over here. Oh, there's still outlets there. <gasps> um, Sorry, I wasn't expecting that. That used to be like the only set of kitchen outlets. They didn't just move, they added so that you actually have an appliance station over here now. Yes, that it, they're listening. They're listening with both ears. They have two ears and one mouth. They have shut up and they have listened. <laughs> 12 volt DC compressor fridge over here by that door, which does have a privacy shade in the entry door, by the way. Um, they had room, so I said, why not? Let's, let's put a big drawer down there. But look at this. Remember the Mervin shelves? Well, this over here is a nice little slot of pantry space. I, I will tell you, I don't like open door storage like this. I understand though, between the refrigerator and the entry door, there wasn't a whole lot of room for them to like put doors on this, but check this out. Every one of these is one of those Mervin shelves. So now you want a place to put a broom? You want a place to shove your skinny, mouthy nephew when he says he can beat you at uh, the bag toss game, you know, out front? Um, well, I just shove him in there, lock him in. You know, <laughs> obviously I don't uh, endorse shoving kids into locker size spaces, but you get it. And then look at this. This is just pure additional storage space that you're getting uh, in comparison to the, uh, the smaller 171. It, it just that, you know, there's just, space there available in this model that just flat out was not available in the little brother and when up the kitchen cabinetry isn't blown wide open 
It actually feels nice and clean and open and spacious in here. Part of that is due to the fact that the ceiling actually vaults up, but you might notice it looks like a flat ceiling. That's because it actually has a north to south vault, not an east to west vault, which is interesting. Above the sofa, uh, some people said the 171, I don't like how you did the storage there. So they did it better based on your feedback. You guys said, we don't like how you did the shades. So they did it better. That's, uh, I, I love it when a brand is live evolving like this. Now over here, you might look at this and say, there's a lot of room behind that sofa. That is because they open this up for storage. But one of the things that I really love right here is how you've got these uh, USB plugs built right into this thing. But behind the sofa, you've got split storage drums. And you're going to see this kind of arrangement where instead of some floor plans that previously only had dinettes, you can now option a sofa with storage behind it in a dinette slide to really, I mean, you know, if you prefer a Dynofa, like you saw this one has, great. You prefer a, uh, a dinette, this floor plan, we're looking at a sofa, but I believe that slide is, can actually house a dinette as a result. And, and by the way, even the dinette, uh, I'm sorry, the slide floor, even the slide floor is all composite. Like I said, there's not a splinter of wood in the construction. And this, this shocked me. I didn't even know this about Ember. I thought the walls were Asdell. What I didn't realize is like the interior partitions are Asdell. I, I, I just, I, I didn't expect that. I, most Asdell using brands don't do that. That it just totally blew me away. So this basically is like the only wood in the RV, just so that it feels a little bit warm. You know, this stuff is Asdell. By the way, that is a thermistor. That's a little thermal temperature sensor. Now the bathroom in this, I, I think is a little bit better than the 171. Um, the toilet space was a little tight, but it wasn't terrible. And did you notice that is porcelain? We have ourselves a little drunken octopus fight club to hold the towels when you're done. And again, they're Asdell walls. So if the towel's damp, you don't got to worry about tearing things apart. Um, it is at least six and a half foot tall in here. So if you're six foot plus like me, you're going to be able to stand in that shower if your head's in the bubble. But notice they gave us a maximized skylight uh, in here. We also have the Aquaview shower miser. So if you are going to do some of that overlanding boondock off-grid, off-pavement camping, you're not wasting your fresh water here. Um, if you need to learn more about that, leave me a little comment and I can give you maybe a quick little fill in there. But, uh, you know, decent space uh, around. It, it's funny. It looks fine. It matches the color palette. I think some people are going to dislike that little plastic sink, though, um, just because everything else in this looks and feels so high class, including that factory standard big vent fan uh, up there. Oh, you know what? I just realized I am, uh, oh, hey, you're getting a reflection. How are you doing there? Um, I hate seeing myself in the mirror like that. Uh, we're hooked up. I'm gonna show you road mode. And it is phenomenal. It is absolutely phenomenal. And seeing how functional it is with the slide closed, I, I start to wonder, what if there's a version of this that had no slides so you didn't have all this boxy stuff in the way? And then I realized, I talked to Ember, they're like, yeah, we're already kind of working on something like that. So once again, stay tuned, all kinds of good stuff coming. Um, there is more than enough room to put down the bed and still walk around it. So even at a travel stop, we are, we're 100% we're accessible and functional at a travel stop. Bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, every square inch of storage. And by the way, you have two kind of uh, accent lights here in the bathroom. You have the backlit morning mirror. You also have the little ember glow lighting with the amber glowing lighting right here. And there's a switch for that both um, in the bathroom as well as like by the entry door. There's a similar little uh, glowing light right by my right foot right now. And speaking of lights, one of the other things that's cool on these, uh, cabin lighting, dimmer switch awning lighting dimmer switch they're giving you more controls over stuff like this i love it and i know i'm like ah! or this like but it's awesome this is everything everyone said they they wanted and it follows so many of the principles that i love use common sense <laughs> i didn't even notice this i was so focused on the fact that it's a true queen bed I just saw a shadow back here. I was like, what is that? And I realized, not only are they giving us side drawers, 
Not only are they giving us a, oh, oh, yes! We have CPAP storage pockets over here, household and USB outlets, uh, you know, individual little reading light switches that are not Jedi lightsaber Labatt's blue lights, USB plugs for phone, everything! This is awesome! There's axle lighting up here! That's on a dimmer switch, by the way! And check out the headroom! I'm sitting straight up at the headboard area of the bed, and look at this! <laughs> oh! Ooh! There, by the way, let me try not to make you motion sick. Sorry I'm whipping the camera around here. This is the switch for the little <laughs> suntan light, but I'm like an adult, allegedly, whatever. You would think at some point I would stop looking directly at a light when I'm going to turn it on. Maybe I could at least dim it down a little bit before I went like that with it, you know. <laughs> Still. This is awesome. This is, this is, and hold on. When you are laying in bed, assuming you have the shades open, imagine a beautiful, clear, starry night. <laughs> that would be so cool. Now you may have noticed there was a lot of room to walk around that bed and it looked and felt even bigger in here, right? That's because these, whatever we want to call them, tandem axle, even though they're technically four wheel independent, like quad wheel embers, they are bulked up from a seven and a half foot body to an eight foot wide body to really maximize the space in the storage. And the moment I walked around the corner and I saw this sitting here, this bigger ember with the four wheels, I just started grinning like an idiot. <laughs> it just looks so cool. It looks so right. Like it, it's the direction I always knew they were going to go, but seeing them get here is so very awesome. One of the other things that I noticed on this one with a bigger sidewall, they have more room for a longer awning on these, which is something a small camper often struggles for. Now, we've got lots of other Ember videos. I don't know if you've seen those or not, so I want to give you some quick overview on this because uh, there, there's not really anything else constructed like this. Like, for instance, there's essentially not a splinter of wood in the structure. Um, the entire thing is like aluminum and composites effectively. So our walls are Asdell inside and outside layer. They're lightweight composite materials that are, uh, Asdell itself is waterproof, keep in mind. Now what I didn't say is the RV is waterproof. I said the material that composes the skin of the walls on the inside and the outside, that is waterproof. But it's aluminum structured, it's laminated, your floor is um, a, a pure composite floor where it's Asdell top and bottom layered, but then it has a one inch thick core of this ultra dense composite material that actually has a greater screw retention and load bearing capacity, even compared to plywood. Now, it's uh, awesome, but it's not an inexpensive material, but that's what you're looking at here. This is, like I said, a, uh, you know, you could totally flex on the neighbors in the campground with one of these things if that's your thing, but. Uh, it, it is something that is potentially like generational that you could maybe like hand down to you know somebody a kid or something like that because there's uh, you know not really anything in the structure that can rot off this thing um, the suspension is one of the major things on this and it actually shapes the chassis but this has a true four-wheel independent suspension that I you just don't see a lot of um, especially in the American markets. Uh, you know, they, they took what they were doing on the Ember single axles with that Kurt off-road um, trailing arm, you know, suspension package, and they just sir mix a lot of it. <laughs> if, in case you're not aware of what that means, it means they said, uh, double up, uh, uh. And um, <laughs> it is, this has to be one of the best handling, best riding short four-wheel trailers like this. Now, the thing is, these are not ultralights you start hearing composite you start hearing asdell you start thinking light weight and that is not what this is right here this is a uh, a heavy rugged uh almost industrial kind of built rv that just has an amazing look and finish on it and just like the other embers you have the option of upgrading from the standard single 190 watt panel to a triple 190 watt 570 watt roof solar system they call max solar and when you do that you also upgrade from the uh thousand watt factory inverter to a three thousand watt like 
hybrid smart inverter charging system that it completely changes the electrical system on this RV from like a fundamental base level. But what that is capable of doing is charging the uh, at least two factory supplied uh, battle borns. When you get the max package, you can actually option, uh, well, you start with two, you can option number three and four onto that. So you can get one or two additionals or we can help fulfill something like that for you. But um, it not only can charge those very quickly, um, it, it can run anything in the RV off battery power if needed, including the air conditioner, albeit for a limited time. Keep in mind, um, it, this is not the kind of product where you can park it in the desert and run the AC nonstop. I don't want to, uh, I'm not going to like give you, sell you misinformation and, and have you spend this kind of money based on wrong info. I want you to know what you're getting. But the fact is, you can get right from the factory something that can really run the RV. And if you're looking, you might notice it's a completely rubber-free roof. The, the roof is just like the sidewalls. It's Asdell top and bottom. It's all aluminum. It's all composite. Um, the, uh, the thing is, under this whole exoskeleton, there's actually a layer of a turnabond tape. And then on the roof, they do top seal and perimeter seal everything. So effectively, they've got double seal action going on. And it, although it doesn't look like it from here, if you go back and look at the RV straight from the door side, the camp side, you might, it looks like the awning's crooked. It's because the roof is actually on an angle, so you do have water runoff, which I think is very cool. And these little, these little, like, laser cut little ember fairings up here. Come on, that's just, that's just candy, man. Now, to get up there and get you that footage, I had to get a better vantage point. Thankfully, the optional gearbox on the front of this is built and structured so that if a chunky dad bod cheese curd eating dude like myself wants to climb up there, it ain't gonna collapse under you. It's made to handle that kind of stuff. Um, and it's made of the same material as that whole exoskeleton that covers that Eternabond tape. It, uh, it's a powder coated aluminum. So once again, um, you know, worries about things like, you know, rust corrosion, they're just greatly diminished and minimized here. Now this is that max solar unit. So normally up here, this would be your battery compartment. Now it just becomes generic cargo storage if you are so inclined. Um, they do a little bit different tongue jack system up front here. Uh, basically, it's a power corner jack stabilizer leg that they're using as a tongue jack, but that got rid of the traditional manual crank, although that power jack can be manually overridden if need be. Uh, you might notice the hitch coupler on this is a little bit different. They call that their Versa coupler, because if you really want to do some off-road stuff, you're probably going, uh, going to want to look into something like a lock and roll articulating hitch system. So that very easily now could be applied to this Ember RV. Uh, a, a fully enclosed docking station, Nautilus style, like a, you know, a big fancy fifth wheel or something like that is included here. Something else I wanna show you, tucked away, hidden up here in the corner, even with Max Solar, you still have the ability to use a portable side, uh, uh, like panel, solar panel package, suitcase style. So that if you want to park in the shade, you want to still chase the sun, you could take the factory 570 watts of solar and increase it even further. Notice too how our holding tank poles and valves are fully enclosed and protected. That is because embers are officially tested and proven in the uh, Truma uh, facilities to be 0 to 100 degree hot cold camp rated. Uh, Underbelly is enclosed. Uh, radiant barrier, 12 volt thermostatic tank heater standard on all of these. Notice too that handy sewer hose caddy tube, very important because this does not have a full rear bumper and it's one of the bigger tubes where if you want to leave your, uh, you know, bayonet couplers hooked up to the sewer hose, you know, you can do that when it is time to uh, deploy the stinky slinky. Battery disconnect switch over here and that little black plug on the left, that is just a little prep plug for the included factory tire pressure monitoring system. And this is something I think is a significant benefit here on the 201 versus the 191 because they have more room under the bed to hide some of their system stuff. They have more pass-through storage space that the little guys tend to lack. Now with Max Solar, you're getting uh, some of your like, um, you know, solar observation monitoring hardware over here. I kind of prefer it a little bit more in the unit by the control panel, but you can basically Bluetooth and monitor all that stuff straight from your phone anyway. So you're never effectively more than an arm's length away um, from, from monitoring your stuff, if you're like me. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I got a phone tech addiction. That stupid thing is on my hand, in my pocket, all the time, even when it shouldn't be, and I can't help but fiddle with it. Um, now, this is a better angle. Again, I was telling you about that, that slanted 
roof, you see how it does actually uh, stream backwards. And how cool of like a, like it looks like it's moving when it's not kind of thing here, you know? They, I thought he did such a good job of that. Extending that awning arm just in front of that window and just behind that baggage door. That, that right there, that's a Mortal Kombat flawless victory. Now, if you're familiar with some of the other things that they've put out, usually in this position, there is something like uh, there was a mini fridge and an optional griddle, an outside camp kitchen, but your feedback said, can we please get it without that? Can we please get it with just storage and wide open space? And Ember said, no sweat, you got it. So they're making that something that can be done right from the factory instead of removing stuff that you don't want after the fact. You know what I thought about in this space? Like, what would you do with this space? The first thing I thought of, that right there would be my trash can space. I could have an indoor, outdoor trash can accessibility. But thankfully, we do always have that there propane cooker hooker available for that, uh, e even on a rainy day. Under the awning, you could still get out here, do some grilling, do some chilling. The tires on here are a Goodyear Wrangler, 87 mile an hour rated uh, American made tire. And again, we do have that factory TP mess standard on there. This also is prepped and ready for a full observation camera suite rear sides all the way around to give you maximum visibility if you want it and it does have turn signal safety lighting so if you flip on your right hand blinker somebody over here in, in kind of a blind spot sometimes even if you have extension mirrors it can be a little hard to see or there's some people with a tiny car that just fly up way too fast and i'm tripping on a pallet over here that i'm sure osha wouldn't mind um <coughs> never mind that don't watch this osha uh, you get the idea. If you're from OSHA, uh, t t turn this off. No, actually, you know, wearing, you saw me wearing the safety glasses, trying to follow all the guidelines and safety. I don't want to put anyone's jobs in jeopardy because I'm an idiot. Um, but you get the idea. Turn signal safety. Now, if you look at the, on the back wall, the upper right corner, that is a ladder mount for a telescoping ladder that you can get optioned on one of these. Uh, we do try to keep those on our shelves in our service department. Those ladders are becoming more and more common. And I mentioned how this does not have a bumper, but it does have a 300 pound accessory hitch. So let's say you've got some kind of cargo pod or bike rack or even a tray for like a small generator or something. This RV can do just about anything. And one of the other nice things about this one that they nailed, it does have one single stink pickle deployment system all located right here. And look at the ground clearance that you have off of that thing. It's awesome. Not to mention, what you can't see are some fantastic holding tank capacities. So real quick note what's happening back here. Um, I just mentioned that I was coming down to the factory today. Word got out across our showroom floor at our Coldwater Michigan home store. And any of our staff on their day off, they volunteered to come in today to go through here to get to see this, to check all this out. It's one of the most awesome benefits about being so close to the heart of Midwestern RV production. We get to come in here and see how this stuff is done. I just I just thought I, should, I thought it was so cool. They were so interested in being able to, to, to learn about the product and take care of people. They volunteered to come in. And don't worry, I know it's their day off and they're coming to work. They even dressed for the part, which is nice. I'm gonna make sure they're taken care of for that. Don't worry. Now, we were in the 201 FBQ. Uh, again, that is the Big Brother version of the 171 FB. I said the other thing that we're going to be looking at today is the Big Brother version of the 191 MDB. This is called the 221 MDB, roughly 22 foot box, one slide, uh, Murphy bed, double bunks. Now, once again, if you'd like to learn more about this in detail, watch our video on the 191 MDB because all the equipment, the general information is going to basically match. This is just going to be a bigger version with more storage and a revised front bed arrangement. Now, the other RV that we were at, although in a prototype phase, was largely complete. This one is not. Please don't have a heart attack. And actually, maybe take a, this as an opportunity to get to see a little bit more under the skin information on these. And if you'd really like to learn more under the skin, I either have published or will soon be publishing a full walkthrough factory tour of this facility that I'm also going to record today. I just don't know the order in which I'm going to publish all of those. Um, so, you know, from here back, it's fairly similar to the 191. You're going to notice though, one of the biggest complaints on the 191, and it was not unjustified, the entertainment center location on the 191 MDB, by default, super sucks. 
Uh, so again, I, I hope you appreciate the fact that I'm willing to be super candid about this stuff, obviously. But um, if you option a sofa in the slide instead of a dinette of the 191 MDB, then it's not bad. But this one, because this is a front uh, Murphy bed, when you're sitting on the front sofa, you're now directly on Boardwalk and Park Place straight across from the Entertainment Center, which makes a lot more sense. This has the same bathroom, the same uh, bunk arrangement as the 191, where you have these like 600 pound rated bunks. Um, so if you take a look at this, it says 300, 600. It's 300 pounds per sleeping space. This is a double sleeper, 600 pound total capacity. You've got the, uh, you know, the rear cargo door back here. And if you're wondering about something that offers uh, like customizable, removable, adjustable bunks and a bigger cargo space, that will be where the 191 MSL, the missile comes in. And guess what, Carol Baskin? Either we have or will soon have footage of that one as well. So check the links in the video description uh, for other supplemental information you know, on top of this. Now, if you are curious about pricing, at the time I'm recording this, it's a prototype. There is no invoice, no known pricing. of. Oh, I like that backsplash in that shower. There, but at the time of this, there is no official known pricing on this RV. That will change, and as soon as it is available, we will have that published on our website uh, for any model that's in stock. And once it is available, you can contact our team, and they can always get you quotes or figures on something. And understand, pricing can vary by thousands based on shipping distance to uh, any of our different stores, as well as, like, if you add that max solar package, you could easily add several grand to the RV very, very quickly. But this right here... We already saw how that front north-south walk-around bed works. Well, what's nice is when the bed's down, this will look and work exactly the same. But during the day, what's going to be down here is uh, like a little simulated cinema seat jackknife sofa with a, uh, a fold-down kind of armrest in the middle. But if my eyes are not mistaken, there is a mattress in this one as well. So most Murphy bed models, you know, the, the Murphy bed almost feels like an afterthought. Once again, this is a 60 by 80 queen sized. I will tell you, that is a bendy bed mattress. There is a fold on it right there. But that is also the fact that the headboard doesn't nose dive down. Means it is safe, means you cannot be lawn chaired in it, and it allows for maximum storage, not just under the bed through that pass-through that we're going to take a look at one of the uh the full exteriors on these in just a second you'll see the enhanced pass-through on this but that full storage with the hanging wardrobe towers the storage above the bed as well as the same little hidden side pocket storage over here this is awesome it's it's like it's everything everybody said they wanted out of this and I know I've said it a hundred times, especially in this unit right here. It's still very much in the in-production prototype phase. But that's part of the reason they wanted to have me down. One, so that you could see a little bit more of these things under the skin. And two, get your input and your feedback to see what they can or should do moving forward and how this product can continue to evolve based on your feedback and input. So if you appreciate how we took time away from the office to come down here today to get you this special footage, Hit the like button on our video. If you're new with us, make sure you hit that subscribe button because not only do we uh, have this prototype footage coming out, we have other things like factory tour, all the different models they put out and uh, all kinds of things coming out on our channel all the time. Uh, and not just even Ember related, but tips, tricks, and all kinds of different stuff. So if you're looking forward to seeing that, we're looking forward to seeing you. And whether you're curious or whether you're serious, when you're ready, we're ready to meet you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.